Hello and thank you for watching Kaluna Creations. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make some bedside pockets rather like these. So it's got lots of storage running all the way along it and it's also got some tabs that you can wrap around your bed just to hold it in place. So you've got one on each end and one in the centre. Now if you are a complete beginner to sewing, if you want to just follow this link up here, then that will show you what equipment you're going to be needing. The only thing extra you're going to be needing on top of that is some Velcro tabs, alright. Now once you've got all those bits and bobs ready, if you'd like to keep watching I'll let you know what fabric measurements you're going to be needing. So the first piece of fabric we're going to be needing for this project is 95 centimetres long by 18 centimetres wide and this is going to create our front pocket, alright. So for the front and back we are going to be needing a piece of fabric that is 80 centimetres long by 22 centimetres wide and we want two of those <laughs> we also want some fabric to make our tabs and they are 11 centimetres by 8 centimetres we want three of those And for the other side of the tabs, we need 22 centimetres by 8 centimetres. And again, we'd like three of those. Now the Velcro, we just want an inch's worth in the hook Velcro. We want three of them. And we want two inches worth of the loop and again we want three of them and that's it now I am using old exhibition graphics for this project as per normal and I would highly highly encourage you to use old fabric as well so I'm talking about curtains tablecloths um, duvet sets anything like that for this particular project I would say that the more sturdy materials are probably going to be a bit better for this one. Uh, I would definitely avoid anything that's got stretch just because there are several layers that we're putting into this um, and with stretchy fabrics they do tend to have a mind of their own and so if you're putting four or five layers of stuff together then yeah it's not going to like you. So stick with the non-stretch fabrics for this and you should be able to create something really awesome. Now this first part I would normally show you looking down rather than me holding up the fabric but because of the length of it it's not going to fit into the shot so I'm just going to show you while holding it up. Now you need to grab the piece of fabric that you're going to be using for your pocket front and what you want to do is just fold over the top by a centimetre and press that down and once you've got that nice crease I want you to take it over to the sewing machine and put a line of stitching running all the way along just to hold that down all right and then once you've done that that is your front pocket prepared So here's our pocket with the stitching going all the way along the edge. So that is ready now to go into our pocket sandwich, should we call it. <laughs> so what you want to do is grab one of your blue pieces, well blue in my situation, we'll call it the front shall we, and then we want to place our fabric pocket on top of that 
So lining the bottom seam with the bottom of this. So our nice top stitched pocket top is at the top here. And then get your second blue piece of fabric. This time we want to face it downwards on top. Like that. So we've made a pocket sandwich. Now all you want to do at this stage is sew along the side. And then we're going to do exactly the same on this end. But as you can see, our pocket is quite a lot longer than the rest of the fabric. So all you want to do is bring this in and then place the fabric on top again like that and then sew along the edge remembering to go forwards backwards to reinforce the start and finish so that will leave you with excess fabric in the center of this and that is what we want so i'm just going to go and do that now and then i'll show you the complicated bit next here we go so we've sewn the three pieces of fabric on both ends like that. Now here comes the slightly more complicated bit, but I will talk it through it really, really slowly to make it nice and easy for you. So grab the piece of fabric so that the bottom is here. Make sure it's nice and flat. Now what you wanna do is grab your ruler just mark from the edge of the material not your seam you want to go from the edge where 16 centimeters comes to and on your fabric on the inside you want to mark where 19 centimeters comes to like that now all you want to do is match up where that 19 and the 16 match like that and at some point during this center stage you want it to fold over so I tend to go for about halfway like that just to show you a bit easier and then we'll pop this back and what I tend to do is just clip it or pin it in the right place just check that's still lining up, it is, that's lovely. And then we do it again. So from that mark where you had 19, again, you want to do another 19. And from this mark, you wanna do 16. So move this in to meet its friend. Move this out of the way so that you can give it a nice little fold. And then pop the fabric back and clip it into place. Tug that tiny bit there. and we're still lining up that's great now I'm just going to keep going along doing that exact same thing but I'm just going to speed it up so you don't have to watch it okay so now we've got this all in place all we need to do is put in a line of stitching going all the way along the edge right to the very end and then I can show you what to do next now we want to prepare our tabs so grab one of the pieces of fabric and fold it in half and give it a press 
So iron it flat like that. Once you've done that, put in a line of stitching here and a line of stitching all the way along here just to join those two sides together. And you want to do that to absolutely every single one of them. So your three longer pieces, as well as <laughs> your three shorter pieces too. Okay. So I shall go and do that and then I'll show you what to do next. There we go. So we've got three big ones and three little ones. Now before we turn them out, what's going to make it a lot easier is if we just cut the corners of the fabric like so, just so that it is not as bulky when it comes to turning them out. So do that on all of them. So I'll do these while you're here. So it only takes a second. And the same on that one. Like so. Now to turn them out, what I find is quite pretty easy is if you just pinch out and push it inside itself, just a little way to make a bit of a dent. Then grab a knitting needle or a pencil and just force it down, like that. And then you can use the pointy end to really push out those corners, like that. Now I'm just going to do that to all of them and then I'll show you what to do next. There we go, all the right side out now. Okay, so the next job is to put some Velcro onto them. So we've got our Velcro tabs. Mine are self-adhesive, just because that's what I use to stick graphics onto shell schemes. So that's what I've got lying around. But if yours is just the um, normal stuff, all you need to do is place it in position and either just clip it or pin it into place, all right. So we're gonna put the long strips of the loop Velcro onto the long ones. And we're gonna put the shorter sections of the hook Velcro onto the short ones. Now once we've got them in the right position, what we wanna do is go all the way round and just sew it into position. Because if you're like me and you have used self-adhesive, eventually that is gonna come off. So we want to keep sew it anyway, just to make sure that they stay in position. And we're gonna do that to all six of them. And then they'll be all prepared for when we create the rest of it. There we go, all our Velcro sewn on. Now, as you can see, they are a little untidy at the moment, all these loose dangly threads everywhere. Now, the way I tend to deal with them is grab a needle, or a pin even, and just give one of the threads a little tug, just to bring through a loop. If you pop your needle or your pin through that loop, like so, and just give it a tug until it comes through. And just do that on both sides. Like so. And then we haven't got any dangly threads on this side. They're all on this side instead. Now once they're here, all you need to do is give them a knot. which is where I always struggle. I don't know why I can't ever not when I'm on camera. Let's try again. <laughs> there we go. Do it once and then twice, just to make sure that it's definitely secure. And then if you grab a needle 
and thread all four threads onto it. So they don't want to go through, there we are. So thread them all on and then we can tuck this back through into the middle of our pocket. Like so. And then just give that a tug, bring it through. And then by doing that, when we trim that bit off, it means no one will be able to see that at all. So you want to do that to all six of your tabs, and then they'll be ready to go onto our main pocket. Okay, so we've got our nice row of stitching going all the way along the bottom now, creating all our nice pockety shapes. Now, what I want you to do next is grab two of your tabs, and what you want to do is place one on top of the other, like that, so the longer one is going underneath, with the shorter one on top, both with Velcro facing up. And we want to slot this inside our pocket exactly like that. And probably go about an inch in. Doesn't really matter a great deal. And just either clip or pin it in place. And you want to do the same in the middle. So again, long one short one and then pop it inside and just to find where the middle is I'm just going to fold it in half so it's there just make sure that's all flat yep and pin or clip it in place and then do the same on the far end. Like that. So now what we're going to do is put in a line of stitching all the way along, going forwards, backwards over where we've got our ties. Then carry along all the way to here. Again, go forwards, backwards over the ties. But when we get to around about here, we want to stop and go forwards, backwards, just to reinforce that area. And then we're gonna, so we've stopped here. We're gonna start again here, go all the way along, go forwards, backwards over our tie, and then to the end. And that is gonna leave us with a little bit of a gap so we can still get our hand in and we can turn the whole thing out, okay? So we've got our line of stitching all the way along the top now, with our gap here. Now what I'm going to do is just pop my hand in, go along to the end, and just pull it all back the right way out. Now sometimes it takes a bit of encouragement, other times it goes in straight away. There we go. As soon as it starts coming out, it's usually pretty good. So what we're going to do is just use our knitting needle again, just to force out all the corners. Oops. Need to trim that one. So just go into the corner and push it out. And do the same down here. And the same on the other end. And in the far corner. Like that. 
Okay, so now that it's all turned the right way out, what we want to do is just press all this down, so iron it all flat, like that. So, Lou, we can close up this gap here. So, once that's all flat, we're just going to put in a line of top stitching all the way along here, right down to the other end, and then that will close that hole for us. And then we'll be ready to put in the pockets. And there we go, our nice line of top stitching, closing up our gap up here, so that's not going anywhere now. We do have loose threads at the start and finish though, so like we did last time, just pull that thread until a loop appears, pop that through. Just put your needle in the loop and pull it through so that it's on the right side. And then just knot it once and twice. Like that. And then get your needle, thread those onto there. So if it wants to go through for me, there we go, lovely, and then just poke that back into the fabric so that it just gets it out of sight. Like so. So it's going through, but not going through to the other side, just going through the back, just to hide those. And then just trim it off. And when you roll that, the knot just disappears. Now you want to do that on both ends, I won't show you that because it'll be tedious for you. But I will go do that in a moment. Now with all of our pockets, what we want to do is find about halfway between our um, folds each time. So you can do it with a ruler, it's not an exact science. So it's about 18 between these folds here. So I want to go for about 9. So where I'll be doing my line of stitching is along here. And then when I get to the top, I want to go forwards, backwards quite a few times and I want to go past the pocket into the blue area here. So it'll be slightly higher and we want to go forwards and backwards a few times just to make sure that that's going to stay nice and secure. Because when people put their hands and things, pocket stuff into these pockets, there's going to be a lot of stress on there. So we want it to be nice and strong. All right. And then just go along all the way, just measuring where the part is. So this one's 16, I did this one a bit more accurate. So that one would be eight, and it would be like that, that I will be sewing my line. All right, so just go along the whole way doing that. And then we're almost done. And now we have pockets! <laughs> now the last job that we've got then is, see all these dangly threads? You got it! We're going to be tucking them onto this side. Now unless you really, really are a neat freak, there's no need to be knotting them and poking them back into the back of this. You might as well just knot them and then snip them because this is the back of the uh, pockets. This bit is going to be not on show at all, so there's no need to go threading them back through unless you really, really want to. So I will just do the one up here, just to show you. So we bring the thread through, 
give it a quick knot. But like I say, this time, just snip. And there we go. And you want to do that with all of these start and finish threads, um, just to make it nice and neat. And then we can check that it fits. And there we have it. Our lovely set of bedside pockets. <laughs> now hopefully that means our children will have much, much more organised bedrooms. But we all know that probably won't happen, but at least we tried, eh? <laughs> now if you did enjoy this tutorial, please do like and subscribe. That way, every time I put on a new video, you'll get a notification and hopefully it'll encourage you to make something new out of more old fabric. Hopefully I'll see you again soon.